Welcome to my course on Spring Boot 3. We will be learning how to build a simple online shop using Spring Boot, Simlip, Hibernate and we will be using Postgres as the database. This course is aimed at beginners, however, we will be needing basic Java knowledge to properly understand the material covered in this course. This is the first video where I will be showing how to properly set up your application, download the starter project and import it into IntelliJ. But first, what even is Spring Boot? To keep it short, Spring Boot is the most widely used framework for building a highly scalable and high-performance web application in the Java programming language. It comes with many features, many extensions, and it is quite easy to get started with. Here is just a small example on how to create a new endpoint that returns a string. We'll be covering this and much more in this course. So let's start by closing this window and going to start.spring.io. Here we'll find a simple online tool that will help us create a Spring project. Spring currently supports multiple build tools, for example, Gradle with Groovy, Gradle with Kotlin and Maven, as well as multiple programming languages like Java, Kotlin and Groovy. Currently, the latest stable version is 3.1.3, .3, but this may change in the future. So let's fill in the, a few details, for example, the group name, artifact name, the description, and so on. Yeah, sorry for the mistakes. And let's select how we want our application to get packaged. We have Java and var and the Java version. 17 is the right version for now. We can use 20 if you feel, but I prefer 17. Let's start by adding dependencies by clicking this button. This window will appear and we will can search. The first one and the most important is Spring Web because we want to create a web application. After that, we can use Lombok because I prefer to use it for building data classes and so on. And Thymleaf for our template engine. We need to communicate it with the database. So let's start by adding a Spring Data JPA. And since we'll be using Postgres, let's add the connector as well. We also need Spring Security, which will handle authentication and authorization in our application. After that, we can click the Generate button, which will download our file. If later we discover that we need other dependencies, we can easily add them without any problems, because the project will use Gradle, which makes it easy to manage dependencies. Now we need to unzip the file we downloaded and import it into IntelliJ. Once uh, we unzip the file, we can import it easily by using the open and browsing for our project. If we don't see it from the start, you can just hit refresh. In this case, we already have it. It's there under courses and we have our shop Spring Boot. Just click on the folder and open. IntelliJ will start to import the project and as you can see in the lower right corner it will start to download our dependencies. This usually takes a few minutes depending on your internet speed and your computer but don't worry once everything is finished we, the project will be properly imported. After Gradle has finished downloading all the dependencies we have our project here with the project structure. This is the build.gradle file, as, as you can see, we have our dependencies. And this is our sources directory. For now, we only have one Java file and a resources folder. We'll be adding more classes as well, and also resources like images, and most importantly, timelift templates. That's all for this lesson. Head over to the next one. We will be defining controllers, creating a simple home page with just some text for now, and uh, running our application. Thanks for watching and hope I'll see you 
in the next lesson.